Hi folks and welcome to a no frills low budget battle report which was originally shot for our recent members area experiment which didn't quite work out despite the enthusiastic support from a small group of diehard true believers. A special shout out to those guys. Thank you so much and I'm sorry I wasn't able to follow through the way I'd hoped. Anyway, since video production is very difficult at the moment for a variety of reasons, I thought I would repost this bat rep today so the channel doesn't go radio silent for too long. If you enjoy it and are inclined to throw a couple of bucks in the old guitar case, you can do that through the YouTube Super Thanks button, which is always much appreciated. As you can see, this video was shot in the ruins of the old Hammered Wargaming studio, which seems fitting as today's game is set in the post-apocalyptic wreckage of a world overrun by brain-eating zombies. For this solo game, I'll again be using the Space Weirdo Sci-Fi Skirmish rules from Garski Games, though I've also added a couple of scenario-specific rules of my own just to spike the punch. I will explain these as they come up. So the story here is that a band of five scrappy and heavily armed zombie apocalypse survivors, members of that small fraction of humanity that is apparently immune to the airborne zombification virus, have been scavenging for supplies and trade goods deep within the zombie-infested Forbidden Zone, because that's where all the good stuff is. Unfortunately, these scrap hunters now find themselves cut off from their supply-laden family truckster, which they typically park just outside the impassable Forbidden Zone while they scavenge the ruins on foot. It seems that Trooper Zero, a prototype military reanimation experiment gone wrong, and the original source of the zombie virus outbreak, has shown up with a horde of regular zombies, hell-bent on preventing the humans from reaching their vehicle and escaping because naturally he liked to add them to his ever-growing army of the dead. Regardless of airborne immunity, any human killed by a zombie becomes a zombie. So here are our scrappy survivors and they're gonna have to fight their way across the board to get back to the station wagon. Their warband trait is heavily armed because they are heavily armed and they all have a high firepower rating because that's almost a necessity here in these zombie apocalypse. The band is led by Credence here in the middle and he has an auto pistol, a melee weapon and two grenades Plus he is a tactician, so as long as he's alive, the survivors will roll D8s for initiative instead of D6s. Mohawk here on the left has excellent prowess in addition to his excellent firepower, and he is armed with an auto rifle. The kid right here also has an auto rifle. He is an excellent shot, but not that great in hand-to-hand -hand combat, though he is very speedy. The kid is able to take up to three movement actions per turn. Smokey here is armed with a flamethrower, but because of the bulk of his weapon, He's not as proficient in close combat as either Credence or Mohawk. In fact, Smokey doesn't even carry a melee weapon. And finally, Penelope here on the right is armed with an auto rifle and a melee weapon. She is just as fast as the kid, an excellent marksman, though not quite as proficient in close combat as either Mohawk or Credence. So that's our band of zombie apocalypse survivors. As I said, they will have to fight their way across the board, back to the family truckster, if they intend to leave the Forbidden Zone alive. To make it out, the human survivors are going to have to punch a hole through a veritable zombie horde led by none other than Trooper Zero, the failed military reanimation experiment and the source of the zombie virus. Trooper Zero has an auto rifle, a melee weapon, and cybernetics which gives him a plus one on his hand-to-hand -hand combat rolls. He is also a healer, so once per turn during the initiative phase, if there is a downed or staggered zombie within a distance of one stick, he can give that zombie a free stand action or a free recovery attempt with plus one die type, so that's pretty handy. The regular zombies, however, are not that impressive, even though uh, Trooper Zero is starting with eight of them on his team. They only move one stick per turn unless they spend a command point to hustle. They have low defense and low willpower, but they are decent in hand-to-hand -hand combat, even though they're fighting with just claws and teeth. However, we are going to give them a swarm bonus, which is not in the original Space Weirdos rules, and how that works is if one zombie attacks a survivor, he's attacking normally. If two zombies attack in the same turn, the second one is going to get plus one die type. And if a third zombie attacks that survivor in the same turn, he will attack with plus two die type. So zombie swarms are very dangerous. Also, I'm thinking that there's probably an unlimited number of zombies in the region here. So even though zombies on the table can be taken out, they're likely to respawn on the road here, which should make it a little more challenging for the survivors. So they're really going to have to hustle if they don't want to be overwhelmed. So as I said, the zombies are starting with eight regular zombies at 10 points apiece and one Trooper Zero at 20 points. So that's 100 points total. And there's also 100 points of survivors ranging from 18 points to 24 points. And for a 100 point game, each team will get two command points a turn, assuming the leader is still alive. If the leader is dead, 
They only get one command point a turn. Command points can be spent on buffs like Hustle, which for example would give a zombie an extra stick of movement. Command points can also be used to dodge, to overwatch, to power up, and lots of useful things like that. And finally, I should mention this is a custom scenario, which I've never played before, so it may turn out to be a disaster, but we're all friends here, so let's just kind of wing it and see what happens here in the Forbidden Zone of the Zombie Apocalypse. Alright, let's roll some initiative and get this show on the road. Unless I forget, the zombie should be rolling green dice all game, and the survivor should be rolling red dice, though it's entirely possible that might get mixed up here and there. Since Credence has the leader trait tactician, he is rolling d8s for initiative, while the zombies are rolling d6s. The survivors win the initiative roll, so they will pick one model to activate first. So the first survivor to activate is Penelope. She's pretty speedy, so she can move up to three sticks, but right now she's only moving two. She's going to use her third action to shoot a zombie who's lurking way over here by the station wagon. Now Penelope moved twice, and the zombie's going to get some cover from the corner of this car here, so this will be a difficult shot. Penelope is shooting with 2d8s, and the zombie is defending with 2d8s, and Penelope hits. She shoots the zombie. Penelope rolls on the under fire table and gets a 12, so that is a kill shot. So one zombie is eliminated. Though he will respawn at the start of next turn. So for the zombie's first activation, I think this zombie here is going to spend a command point to hustle. Now normally regular zombies can only move one stick, but now this zombie here can move two sticks. He's motivated by the sound of gunfire from Penelope's auto rifle. So that puts the zombie right there. He has two movement tokens and he's getting pretty darn close to Penelope. On the scavenger's turn, Smokey decides to move two sticks. He kind of shoulders his napalm tanks and jogs over to the wall near the zombie. So Smokey gets two movement tokens and now he's going to unleash his flamethrower on the zombie, being very careful not to splash any napalm on Penelope in the process. So he's shooting the zombie. So Smokey moved twice, so his firepower is reduced to 2d8, and the zombie moved twice, so his defense is increased to 2d8, so both parties are rolling 2d8s. Smokey got an 11, and the zombie got an 8, so that's a hit. Smokey rolls on the under fire table and gets a 10. Wow, killing the zombie. These guys are pretty good at this. So Smokey right here incinerates the hungry, hungry zombie right here and removes him from the board, though the zombie will respawn next turn. On the zombie's activation, a zombie down here by the shipping containers decides to move one stick toward all the action, which puts him right about there. Within line of sight of both Penelope and Smokey. So on the survivor's turn, Credence is going to activate. So in your minds, cue up the song, Fortunate Son. And Credence is going to move to right about here, so not quite two full sticks. Credence doesn't want to get too close to the horde, but he does have a couple of grenades he'd like to use. And if he can get close enough to get several zombies under the grenade template, he might be able to eliminate a bunch in one blast. In the meantime, though, Credence does have line of sight on a zombie, so he's going to take a shot with his auto pistol, though the zombie will get some cover from that junk pile. Here is the command point that that one zombie spent earlier because I'd like the survivors to have the red command points since they're using the red dice. And so Credence is going to spend one command point to buff his shot. So Credence moved twice. He's shooting beyond optimal pistol range and the zombie's getting some cover. So it is D8s versus D8s and the shot does not hit. Worth a try though. On the zombie's activation, another rank and file shambler moves one stick toward the scavengers which puts him right about here. So representatives of the zombie horde are slowly shuffling toward the apocalypse survivors. Next, the kid is going to activate. He was told to hang back, but he's impetuous. So he's going to chase after Credence, moving up one stick and taking cover behind the junk pile. And he's going to shoot at that zombie that Credence missed way at the end of the row there. Now the kid only moved once and he's shooting with an auto rifle. Plus he has two actions left, so he might do something here. So the kid is going to use one action to aim, taking his firepower to D12s, and the zombie is defending with D8s because he has a little cover. The kid got a 19, the zombie got a 10, so that's a solid hit. Rolling on the underfire table to see the result, and the kid gets a 12, so that zombie is eliminated. Oh! 
Okay, next I think Trooper Zero is going to activate. He's the only zombie who can shoot. And he's going to move just over this way. Then Trooper Zero is going to shoot at Credence, leader of the human scavengers, who are killing Trooper Zero zombies and stealing all his junk. Trooper Zero is going to spend a command point to buff the shot. But then Credence, that wily survivor, will spend a command point to dodge. So Credence is going to scamper over here by the erect APC because he doesn't want to get shot before he throws a grenade or two. So there's Credence hiding out by the APC. Since Trooper Zero lost his target, he's going to pick another target, which is going to be the kid who's only half hidden behind a junk pile. So the kid is targeted with a burst of autogun fire, which was originally meant for Credence. Both sides are rolling D10s. Trooper Zero rolls an 11, and the kid gets a 12, meaning bullets pepper the junk around him, but leave the plucky survivor unscathed. So the final scavenger to activate this turn is Mohawk. Mohawk, who's very proficient both at shooting and hand-to-hand -hand combat, is going to move two sticks, spending two actions to do so, which gives him two movement tokens and puts him right there. And then he'll use his final action to shoot across the table at that zombie on the edge. The zombie gets no cover, but Mohawk is shooting into penalty because of his two movement tokens. The results are a tie, which means Mohawk missed. Okay, so that's all the survivors. I think there's three zombies left, and I'm going to quickly activate them. And I think they're all going to just move one stick. So at the end of turn one, we have zombie, 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 and then of course Trooper Zero. Three additional zombies were dispatched by the survivors, but they will respawn next turn. In fact, let's do that right now. I'm going to roll some dice and determine which side of the intersecting highway the zombies appear on. They're all entering from the highway on the edge of the table, either the near side or the far side. This may be more zombies than the survivors can ultimately handle, in which case I can always dial back the number of respawns each turn. Okay, heading into turn two, it's time to roll for some initiative, and the survivors really need to win this so they don't get mobbed. And fortunately, they do, so the survivors are activating first. Credence spends a single action to move up one stick, and then he spends two actions to lob a grenade at the marked spot. Which, if I'm measuring this right, overlaps the bases of three zombies. And Credence himself is just outside the blast radius. We're going to give him the benefit of the doubt because he's dealing with all of those respawns. So I rolled 2d10 once for the blast attack. That's a 14. And then each individual zombie makes a defense roll. All three of them fail, and two of them roll less than half of the attack score. So for those two, Credence will be rolling plus one on the under fire table. The first zombie is singed, but otherwise unhurt. The second zombie is down and staggered. But because he's undead, a second stagger token, should he receive one, will not take him out of action. And the third zombie is knocked down by the blast. So he will have to spend an action on his next activation to stand up. So one zombie is unharmed, one is down and staggered, and one is just down. So on the zombie's activation, this zombie here is going to move one stick and attack Credence. But Credence is going to spend a command point to attack first. Prowess of 2d10 versus a defense of 2d6. That's a 19 versus 8, so that's more than double. Credence rolls on the under attack table, adds one, and that is a 10, so the zombie is killed. <laughs> Though he will respawn on the next turn. Now, Smokey the Flamethrower is going to move two sticks, or almost two sticks. It's going to put him right about there. And he's going to spray Napalm on this trio of zombies, catching all three of them. Now, Smokey did move twice, making his shot a little less effective. So he's going to spend the survivor's second and final command point this turn to buff his firepower back up to 2d10. And he got a 13 for his Flamethrower Blast. The zombies defend with a 5, an 8, and a 7, respectively. Rolling thrice on the underfire table, Smokey scores an out-of-action. Another out-of-action. And finally, out-of-action, so that's a hat trick. 
So Smokey cooks three zombies in one shot and opens up a path to the family truckster, which is in sight. However, now the zombies get to activate, and this zombie here is going to spend a command point to hustle, increasing his speed to two, so that he can charge Smokey, the scourge of the zombie horde. The zombie then uses his third action to attack. The zombie is attacking with 2d8, and Smokey is defending with 2d8. The zombie got a 15 to Smokey's 6, so that's more than double. The zombie rolls on the underfire table and adds 1, gets an 11, so that's the end of Smokey. So this hungry, hungry zombie right here killed Smokey right at his moment of triumph, and Smokey becomes a down zombie who can activate and rise next turn. So starting next turn, Smokey will be just another foot soldier in the relentless army of the dead. Okay, so Penelope doesn't care for that, so she's going to open fire on the zombie in front of her. She can take up to three shoot actions with her auto rifle. Penelope could spend an action to aim, but I think she wants to maximize her shots. She's shooting with D10s, and the zombie is defending with D6s. The first shot hits. Then Penelope rolls on the underfire table, gets a four, which is snapshot. So if the zombie had a firearm, it could shoot back, but it doesn't, so I guess that's just a miss. Penelope shoots again, this time getting a 17 versus the zombie's eight. She'll roll on the underfire table with a plus one this time. Nine is down and staggered. So the zombie is down and staggered, which actually might be better than dead because he can't respawn right away. And then Penelope is going to shoot at the other zombie, formerly known as Smokey, and try to put him out of his misery. An attack roll of 13 versus a defense of 5 is more than double, so Penelope rolls on the underfire table with a plus 1. And 11 is out of action. So zombie Smokey is removed from play and put in the respawn pile. On the undead's activation, this zombie here in the corner... He's going to spend a command point to hustle so he can move two sticks. And he's going to rush Penelope. And then use his third action to attack. So it's 2d8 versus 2d8. I got the dice colors mixed up on this one, so it counts as a zombie miss. Next, Mohawk right here is going to move up two sticks toward the center of the field, putting him right in front of Credence. So Mohawk gets two movement tokens, and he's going to use his third action to shoot at Trooper Zero, ignoring the down zombie who doesn't count as an obstruction or cover. Mohawk is shooting with 2d8s, and Trooper Zero is defending with 2d8s. Attack of 10 versus a defense of 14, so the shot missed. Next, Super Soldier Zero is going to shoot over at Mohawk. He's going to spend an action to aim, which will buff his shot from d8s to d10s. That's an attack of 10 versus a defense of 13, so the shot missed. But Trooper Zero can shoot again, though he'll be attacking with 2d8s this time. And he hits 11 to 8. Rolling on the underfire table, 5, run for cover. So under a hail of fire, Mohawk runs for cover, which puts him right about there, winded but alive. And that is Trooper Zero's activation. He didn't get the carnage he was hoping for. But he did scare off a Humi, which is something. Next, I'm going to activate a bunch of zombies right in a row because I momentarily forgot about the kid. So he'll be activating a little bit later. So we'll start with this zombie right here. He's going to spend an action to stand up. Then he's going to move one stick and attack Credence. The zombie lunges, but he misses 7 to 11. However, Credence is still locked in combat unless he spends two actions to disengage on his next activation. Now this down and staggered zombie is going to attempt to become unstaggered and then stand up. He fails his first attempt to become unstaggered, but succeeds on the second. So the zombie becomes unstaggered and spends his final action of the turn to stand up. Next, this other down and staggered zombie will also attempt to become unstaggered. He fails his first attempt, but succeeds on the second and becomes unstaggered. So the zombie sheds his staggered token and spends his final action of the turn to stand up. And finally, there's the kid who I completely forgot about, so he will get the last activation of the turn, and he's going to move two sticks, which puts him right here behind Credence. They told the kid to hang back, but he never listens, so now he's going to use his third action to shoot at Trooper Zero. Because of movement and cover, it's an attack of 2d8 versus defense of 2d10, and the kid misses, but not by much. 
So that's the end of turn two, and since so many zombies are in the respawn pile, we'll say one to three of them respawn going into turn three. So that's two. We don't want to make it too hard for the survivors, so one zombie respawns right here. And the second zombie respawns way over on the other side of the mat. All right, heading into turn three, four survivors remain, and it's time to roll some initiative. And the survivors win 11 to 10. At the top of the turn, Credence is going to attack that zombie in front of him and hope he can kill it. Credence will spend a command point to power up his attack to D12s just for the heck of it. And he rolls a 21 to the zombie's 7, so that's triple. He rolls on the under attack table, adds 2, and gets a 7, which is enough to knock the zombie down. So the zombie is knocked over, which means Credence is no longer locked in combat. Unfortunately, Credence cannot quite reach the base of Trooper Zero with a grenade. He's just out of range. So he'll throw his second and last grenade at these two zombies instead. The first zombie takes a hit, as does the second. Grenades get a plus one on the underfire table, which I forgot last time. So this is a six, which is knocked back. So the force of the explosion throws the zombie back one stick, after which he falls over. Rolling for the second zombie with a plus one, that's an eight, so that zombie is staggered. He'll have to try to become unstaggered on his next activation. Next, Trooper Zero is going to activate, and he's going to open fire on Credence. But Credence, survivor that he is, is going to spend a command point to dodge. Credence is going to ignore that down zombie and run over here behind the blue car and take some cover. So that puts Credence right over here by Mohawk. And as far as I can tell, this junk pile here blocks line of sight. So instead, Trooper Zero is going to forego his first shot and shoot at the kid instead. So the kid is right here, and perhaps he's going to take a couple of bullets originally meant for Credence. It's D8s versus D8s. Attack of 10, defense of 6, that's a hit. Trooper Zero rolls on the underfire table. 10! So the kid is dead. And of course, Credence is right here to witness the kid's demise and his transformation into a hungry, hungry zombie. So that's it for Trooper Zero. Now the survivors get to activate someone. So Mohawk is going to boogie toward the station wagon. He's going to move two sticks, and then use his last action to fire his auto rifle at Trooper Zero. D8s versus D8s. And Mohawk misses. On the zombie's turn, this zombie stands up and attacks Credence. So that's one attack from a hungry, hungry zombie. Ties go to the defender, so that's a miss. Oops, I accidentally activate another zombie when I should be activating a survivor, but that's okay. The undead spend a command point for an extra stick of movement so that this zombie here can run up and attack Credence. D8s versus D8s. Zombie wins 14 to 11. So the zombie attack was successful. And he gets a 10 on the under attack table, which is enough to dispatch Credence. Poor Credence, now he knows the meaning of someday never comes. And he joins the ranks of the living dead. So on this side of the table, Penelope is going to make a break for the station wagon. She's going to use two actions to break away from combat. And use her third and final action to move one more stick, which takes her over by the shipping containers. In response, the undead spend their final command point so that this zombie can move two sticks, catch up with her, and attack. 14. Fortunately for Penelope, the attack misses. And finally, this last remaining zombie moves one stick. And I believe that's the final activation of turn three. Going into turn four, one zombie respawns, returning to the mat to torment the living. Now it's time to roll for initiative once again. The zombies are still rolling D6s, but because the survivor's warband is broken and their leader is dead, they're rolling with D4s, and they really need to win this. But they did not. The survivors rolled an 8, the zombies rolled a 12, so the zombies will be activating first. This zombie right here is going to attack Penelope in close combat. Penelope is going to spend a command point to strike first, however, but if she's unsuccessful, she will be defending at minus one die type. Penelope is attacking with 2d8s versus the zombies 2d6s, but she completely whiffs it, getting a 5 to the zombies 9. The zombie attacks, getting a 9 to Penelope's 3, so that's triple. 
Zombie rolls on the under attack table, adds one. That's a 10. So that's the end of Penelope. So the zombie kills Penelope, but then he's still got two actions left. So he's going to move across this downed zombie, formerly Penelope, and attack Mohawk. Now, I'm not sure if that's technically legal, but it's thematic, so we'll allow it. So the zombie attacks Mohawk, but fortunately Mohawk defends with a 13 versus the zombie's 11. So on Mohawk's activation, he's going to spend two actions to break away from the zombie, and his third action to jump into the station wagon. leaving Trooper Zero and his Army of the Dead in the dust. However, Trooper Zero did manage to kill most of the scavengers and add them to his undead horde, so not a bad day's work. But Mohawk did escape with the family truckster and hopefully some good tech or at least some tasty supplies. Okay, compadres, I hope you enjoyed this zombie fight game of Space Weirdos from Garski Games. Thanks very much for watching. Stay frosty, and we'll see you next time.